This is my favorite part of the show. This is the curtain speech. Uh, I'm Tom Tose, I'm the producer of Winter Rhythms. Thank you all so much for coming to the final show of Winter Rhythms. This has been a fantastic couple of weeks. 20 shows in 10 days. Uh, this is the last one and you know, like with a lot of endeavors like this, I'm thrilled by it but I'm really, I'm ready for it to be over. And so it's over. And it ends with Songs of Hope. This is the third time we've done Songs of Hope. Uh, but before I tell you about that, I just want to tell you about Urban Stages. This is Urban Stages. It's a wonderful little theater here on West 30th Street. I think of it as home because I've been living here for two weeks. Um, we, Urban Stages does a lot of uh, straight plays and plays from unheard of or unrepresented authors. Um, it's a really a great theater and they do many things and one of the things that they do is community outreach. We go to all five boroughs and do shows in libraries and schools and especially present theater to people who really don't have a lot of other exposure to theater. Um, and there is a summer camp here that's a big deal and your ticket, ticket sales go to uh, help offset the cost of some of those programs. So thank you for that. Thank you for braving the elements and braving COVID and wow, it's been really crazy times. Uh, things have gotten a little bit worse over the last And I'm first. Um, <laughs> during during um, the last year and a half, I've been, I've always played guitar, but I've been um, playing guitar a lot more and uh, I've been buying a few guitars, and this guitar, this is uh, an Emerald guitar, made by the Emerald Guitar Company in uh, near Donegal, Ireland. And you can get the guitar made in a lot of different colors, but I do believe, and my wife Liz got me this as a Christmas present. She allowed me to open it early and play it just for you. So this, is the, this guitar is making its premiere. Um, but I think if, rather than get a red one or an amber one or something, if you're going to get a, a guitar from the Emerald Guitar Company, you should get a green one. Yeah, that's what I think. Um, another thing that I've done during COVID times, I've uh, taken an awful lot of long walks. And I've gotten a different kind of appreciation for New York City. And uh, I wrote this song about a year ago. Uh, but it's still unfortunately pertinent, to, or fortunately pertinent today. Why should, why should I say that a song that I wrote is not pertinent anymore? Okay. It's time for a kind of testimony For this all may be a test To the drink and to the city I love Until hope is nigh Make my Manhattan I'm awaiting the day We can go out and buy some twofers to a Broadway play Make my Manhattan Put some bitters in I like Negroni Got good gin. Make my Manhattan, it's the surefire way that I can stand not going out tonight to cabaret. Till I'm exhausted, then head home and say, Make my Manhattan, make it three parts right. Make my Manhattan, 
Oh, my throat is dry. Make my Manhattan, I'll be raising a glass. Because a better day is coming, and this too shall pass. By the way, by the way, I deeply do believe this too shall pass. Uh, I'd like to bring to the stage now my friend John Delphin. John is making his third appearance at Songs of Hope, and uh, he tells me that this is the first time that he's worn a suit jacket or a sports jacket in two years, and you know that goes for a lot of us. Uh, so welcome, John, and that's a nice looking jacket. So thank you. <laughs> um, and John is, is going to be the musical director for the evening, and our first performer is Danny Backer. Danny? <laughs> now, part of the idea of Songs of Hope is that I get to work with people that I've never worked with before. There are a couple of exceptions on this program, but Danny and I have never done a show together. Is you that were, right? You were going to do Songs of Hope uh, two years ago, but you had to cancel uh, or couldn't make it at the last minute. Um, I and I forgave a, you. It was a and, COVID premonition. <laughs> <laughs> I forgave you and had you back this year. Uh, so Danny, I think we did work together many years ago, in, on this very stage, we did something. Really? I think. Yeah. I, I remember I had um, a, a singer with me. At, uh, we did. Um, I think it was uh, La Vie en Rose and Kiss to Build a Dream on, I swear. Wow. Well, so one of the good things about getting older is that everybody, it seems like everybody... Yes, it's always a new experience. Everything's the first time. Let me just put on my little uh, okay. light prophylactic here. Yeah, we've got, we've got a lot of COVID protocols in place here, including <laughs> microphone covers. Yes, yes. So, Danny, what are you going to sing for us? I'd like to sing a song that I, I recorded on my first, or excuse me, my second uh, studio release called Laughing at Life. And the reason I picked that, Tom, as you know me, that I, I always find that humor is a big part of hope, what gives us hope, right? I mean, we laugh and it, it, it uh, kind of gets us through hard times. Uh, and it actually reminds me of a, of a story recently, you know, a very good friend of mine uh, had gotten a cat during the pandemic. He named the cat Felix and he loved this cat. And as things started to get loose, he got called into to a business trip in Europe. And this was gonna be the first time he was apart from his cat. So he called his brother up and he said, could you please watch Felix for me? Because I'm gonna be gone for about a month. Right? So, you know, he's, he's in Europe, and uh, every day he's calling and checking up on Felix, and about a week into the trip, he calls his brother, and he said, how's Felix? And his brother says, he's dead. Oh, it's terrible. He says, what a horrible thing to say. How could you say it like that? He says, what do you want me to tell you? The cat died. He's dead. He goes, you don't understand. You know how much I love that cat. The first day when I called you, you could have said, he's on the roof. The next day you could say he fell off the roof, but he's okay. He's in the vet, he's getting help. And, uh, you know, and then, you know, say that then there's complications on the third day. By the time I call on the fourth day, you, you let me off easy, tell me that he's, he's passed away, and I'll be a little more prepared. The brother, of course, feels terrible, and he says, you know, you're absolutely right. I should have been more sensitive because it's okay. What can you do? Anyway, how's mom? He says, she's on the roof. <laughs> Smile. 
sides of that coin, or the two sides of this cone. <laughs> and we didn't want to give away the medley. You'll announce yeah. the credits at the end, right? Oh, sure. Oh. For ASCAP and BMI, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> <laughs>
to go and people to see everything for you and me. Life's a ball. I know how one roll for the whole shop bang, one throw that bill will go for hang. I am the target and wham, one shot, just one shot and bam. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> it's not that simple, really. All right, Kate. you can look it up. Okay, and then of course the second song's got a lot of living to do, which I did change a couple of the lyrics there because I didn't think, you know, chicks wasn't. So I know Lee Adams. I'll, I'll yeah, Lee Adams I'll, and I'll, Charles Strauss, I'll, Bye Bye Birdie, and then there's a little of Don't Rain on My Parade with Bob Merrill and Julie Stein. So that was those were the three. Thanks. <laughs> And Kittredge is also an exception. Anne, would you like to come out to the stage, please? <laughs> and Anne and I have had the pleasure of working together a number of times, including in uh, one or two Songs of Hope. But uh, I asked her to make an appearance tonight. Well, I don't know, because Anne is one of the, my best friends in cabaret. And I'm, so I'm, I wanted I'm her to. I'm the girl who can't say no to Tom. <laughs> <laughs> you might want to swap out the. Swap um, the um, okay. cover for that. That's an elegant term for what this is. Okay. <laughs> uh, there are children in the audience, so... Uh, okay, I'll be careful. I, actually, there are children in the audience, but you know. Anyway, um, no, I asked Anne to come. Um, you've had a great year, and you've had a hard year. Yes. Like all of us, and so I thought that you... I I'm thought, thrilled. Yeah, I wanted you here, and you wanted to be here. I am thrilled. So much that she's going to do two songs, because we couldn't really decide which one we liked better. He couldn't decide. I, I, it's all on you. Okay, yeah, I couldn't decide. And I was thrilled. Anytime you can get Anne Kittredge to sing songs, you have her sing as many as she can. So here's her first appearance in Songs of Hope 3. Okay. Good. This is an arrangement um, that Alex Rybeck and I put together. Ooh. Yes, thank you, Mama. <laughs> Where it's snowing all winter through. 
I don't think we've ever worked together. No, this is the first. So this is the first, so we're back to the form of my getting a chance to work with people I've always wanted to work with. Uh, so DC, what are you going to sing? Tell us a little bit about it or yourself. Um, or... Uh, it's a true story. Um, and that's probably the best thing I, the, the most, the, just all I should say really about it. All right. It's a, it's a true story. <laughs> there appears on my desk in November a memo I can't wait to get. Deliver to each company member the date for the drawing's been set. I'm usually the first to return it with a list of my holiday faves. If you ply me with chocolate, I'm happy, and my gifts almost always get raised. This year I'm having a problem. This year is not like the rest. I'm writing to my secret Santa. I've got to get this off my chest. <sighs> Good morning, secret Santa. I'm wondering how you are. I'm wondering if you're gazing at some far-off Christmas star. I'm wondering if you're guessing at your secret Santa's name. I'm wondering if you give advice to a Santa steeped in shame. I cannot take the pressure. I cannot take the stress. I cannot wait till Christmas when we're done with this whole mess. First, let me relieve you. I love the gifts you buy. I love the wind-up reindeer. The once it's wound, it doesn't fly. I love the scented kettle, candle, but it smelled like someone died. And thank you for the fruited cake. I tasted it, I cried. I sometimes wish I told you I'm allergic to mixed nuts. I told them in the ambulance that I just don't quite have the guts. But all in all, the thought's the thing, and you had quite a few. So thank you, Secret Santa. Happy holidays to you. Of all the luck, I picked the name of our CEO's kid. Last night, this kid was bragging about the things his Santa did. The trouble is, I didn't do a half of what he said. Someone else took up the slack. When he complained, I must be dead. Around the water cooler, word had spread. I made him cry because his sister, Secret Santa, set the bar a little high. Every freaking day she gets a gift from you know who. While two weeks in, I give the kid a candy cane or two. A cookie here, a stocking there, a Rudolph pin with lights. This chick is getting bicycles, a Barbie in some tights. Why didn't someone tell me I cannot show my face? Can you arrange a sleigh jacking for me without a trace? Good morning, Secret Santa. Forgive me for this note. I sure could use a doctor, a tranquilizer, or a boat. I'm counting all the days until December 26. And meanwhile, I am suffering sleepless nights and facial tics. I cannot take the pressure. I cannot take the stress. I cannot wait till New Year's Eve to drink and decompress. But all in all, the thoughts and thing, and you had quite a few. So thank you, Secret Santa. Happy holidays to you. That's good, right? Okay, that's good explanation, is any? Good. Thank you. Please welcome to the stage Lori Krauss. Now, this is another first time. I mean, Lori, you and I may have been on bills before together of uh, group shows, but we've never really done what I consider to be work together. 
which means you've never been in a show of mine. <laughs> um, but now, now you are, and I'm delighted. This is a little like being 18 again in front of people for a really scary reason, putting this guy on. But it is <laughs> Thank you for laughing, because it helps me get in the mood to sing. Yeah. And I feel naked. Without masks. We, this is all. This is all strange times. I mean, we're not yeah. wearing masks, and um, but we're singing live before people for the first time in a while. I bet, right? I did an outdoor concert in Pennsylvania in July. Singing indoors for people for the first time. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna wax poetic about why I picked this, but I think the song. The, <laughs> just know that the Gershwin Boys released this in 1937, and. Uh, I think they were clairvoyant about what we would be going through now. So this is not like Secret Santa. This is actually hopeful. Yeah. Well, I heard of it as the last song that George and I were Gershwin wrote. There's a whole story about it okay. that I'm not going to. Which is moving and heartbreaking and and hopeful. Doesn't play into my hopeful theme. Okay. So thanks right. for bringing it up. <laughs> The less I comprehend the world and all its capers and how it all will end. Nothing seems to be lasting, but that is not our affair. We've got something permanent, I mean, in the way we care. It's very clear Our love is here to stay Not for a year But ever and a day The radio And a telephone And a movie Things that we know may just be passing fancies and in time they go but oh my dear our love is here to stay together we're Going a long, long way In time, the Rockies may crumble Gibraltar may tumble They're only made of clay
I, um, I, I want to uh, take a minute and introduce all the three next songs uh, and then let them run uninterrupted. I don't want any of my dribble to uh, uh, interrupt the effect of these three songs, which kind of, you know, by accident, the set list just came together. Uh, well, one of the songs I picked on purpose. Uh, the songs are by three brilliant songwriters, Leonard Cohen, Taylor Swift, and Sam Cooke. Um, and uh, the first song, Hallelujah, will be sung by Emily Bindiger, accompanied by her husband, Robbie Condor. I've wanted to work with Emily for quite a long time. I think of these two as legendary. Emily is a legendary singer, backup singer, and Robbie is a legendary musician. And they may dispute the, that category because nobody really likes to be called legendary, but uh, <laughs> to me they are. And I'm thrilled to be working with them for the first time. Um, Megan Sterna, I just met last week. She was in an earlier um, uh, Winter Rhythm show. She was in Michael Colby's wonderful Ludlow Lad. Um, and we plucked her out of that cast and brought her back to sing a Taylor Swift song. Um, I, it's funny because I, I asked her when I had my first conversation with Megan, I thought, you know, does Taylor Swift have any hopeful songs? And I was thinking of one. <laughs> And Megan said, well, what about change? I said, change. So we're doing uh, Taylor Swift in between uh, Leonard Cohen and Sam Cooke. Now, Michael Wingate and I have worked together many times. Uh, he has been in the, the Harvard Yale Cantata, which is a series that I do over 54 below. Um, but I'm thrilled to have him back at, uh, or here at Songs of Hope for the first time. So, coming up, love, um, hallelujah, change, and a change is going to come with no dribble in between. Please welcome Robin Condor to the piano and Emily Bindiger to the microphone. Shrinking. We producers do all kinds of stuff here. It's fantastic. Do you need help with that? No. <laughs> I think I can do this. Oh, gosh. Oh. Um, you know, it's funny. We are partners in all things. And um, uh, we have not performed, just the two of us, as we are usually do, in over in 20 months, actually. You know, we both have our own little recording studios in our home, and we've been working on different projects during the height of the pandemic, and at one point we were working on the same song, Robbie and his studio, Mine and Mine, and me and mine, and uh, this we haven't done in ages. So, um, when I was uh, 18, I met Leonard Cohen. When I was 19, he asked me to go on the road with him. And so I know that this song that I'm about to do, and I hope you all can sort of sing along in your masks. You're, you're welcome to. Um, it's been covered by thousands of artists, and that's not an exaggeration. But I still find hope and inspiration from it. So thank you for indulging me. I heard there was a secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord but you don't really care for music do you? It goes like this the fourth, the fifth the minor fall and the major lift the battle came composing hallelujah hallelujah I know this room 
Maybe there's a God above, but all I ever learned from love is how to shoot at someone This song is for my biggest change this year, um, the passing of my voice teacher. So thank you, David.
Thank you, sir. Thank you. Is that on? 
Yeah, okay. I dug into my vast repertoire and I thought that uh, this song would be good. Let us pause in life's pleasures and count its many tears while we all sup sorrow with poor. There's a song that will linger forever in our ears. Oh, hard time, come again no more. Tis the song, the sigh of the weary. Hard times, hard times, come again no more. Many days you have lingered around my cabin door oh hard times come again no more while we seek mirth and beauty and music light and gay there are pale forms fainting at the door though their voices are silent their pleading looks will say, Oh, hard times, come again no more. Tis the song, the sigh of the weary. Hard times, hard times, come again no more. Many days you have lingered around my cabin door. Oh, hard times come again no more oh hard times come again no more uh, that's my second favorite Stephen Foster song. My favorite Stephen Foster song is called Ah, May the Red Rose Live All Way. But I couldn't find a way to work that one in. So, <laughs> so we have hard times come again no more. Um, now comes to the point of the program that I've been looking forward to. We're going to give John Delphin the spotlight. Now John uh, is an old friend of mine. And um, one, one thing that I always say about John is too, he hides his head in embarrassment or something. Um, while John was backstage, he, he did like three or four crossword puzzles, I think, right, John? Uh, let me ask you this, honestly. Today, how many crossword puzzles have you done? Ah, uh, but you see, there's a trick in your question. No, there's no trick. Because the Sunday puzzle came out yesterday. Right. So. How many, all right, all right, all right, we'll average. How many did you do this week, approximately? <laughs> 35? 35. So John, John is the nine time, nine time? Thank you for that lie. Seven time. John is the seven time crossword puzzle champion of the American Crossword Puzzle Championship. The funny thing about it is that there is another uh, pianist, music director, whose name uh, escapes me, but he Dan lives now Fair. in San Francisco. Dan Fair. Dan Fair. He's also won a few times. He's won eight times. <laughs> Yikes. And I know I probably asked you this before, but for the edification of our, our uh, audience, what do you think is the kind of, do you think it's just chance that you both are musicians and piano players, or do you think that there is some connection? Is it pattern recognition or what? If I say yes, do you know which part of the question no, I No, because it was, a bad, it was a poorly worded question. Why don't you tell the audience? And, um, I suspect it's just a fluke. A fluke, okay. It is a fluke that the seven-time champion and the eight-time champion of the crossword puzzle just happened to be uh, uh, musicians. Do you know, if, do you know Eric Agard? Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is a song that I wrote several decades ago. Um, it, it doesn't actually have a title. I know what it says in your program. It says we needed a title to put in the program. Uh, it doesn't have a lyric either. But it does have a story. And that's your part. I'll see you on the other side. <laughs>
That's beautiful, John. And I think it's entirely appropriate that the word, the biggest word man on the stage presents a song without, without words. Maybe okay. there's an inethical quality about the, uh, the music, right? Sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but thank you for that. It was absolutely lovely. Um, please welcome back to the stage Emily Bindiger and Robbie Connor. You got the song ready? Yeah. Okay. Because <laughs> I can talk a little more. Yeah. Although, you know. Well, you can. <laughs> we can talk about how we met. Uh, we, I remember meeting you downstairs at the Metropolitan Room. Correct. You were going to a show, or being in a show probably, and I was meeting with my songwriter group. Mm -hmm. I think it was might have been Lori Krause's show. Oh, okay. Is that possible, Lori? It's really possible. It's really yeah. possible. We may want to work on this story. You know, um, <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm, I'm, as you can see, I'm, I'm like buying some time here. Um, yeah, no, really? We, yes. Uh, so the, okay. um, and Robbie, how did we, we meet? We met like a, an hour and a half ago. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's, that, that, that is that's pretty cool. much I think actually, Robbie, we met at Julie Gold's shows down that's at right, the, the Uplex. At the that's, Uplex. Right. Yes. that's right, which is how we met, actually. Okay. Because so now, now that they all know, don't you feel better? Don't you feel better now? <laughs> yes. All right. So, um, so what are you going to say? Well, I will tell you. Um, one of the things I had been doing, in addition to my musical life, was uh, teaching citizenship preparation to immigrants. Mm. And it's like the greatest job, the greatest non-paying job I've ever had. <laughs> Seriously. Um, I've been doing that for about, had been doing it for two years or three uh, until the pandemic and I just started going back and I hope I can go back. Uh, I started going back last week and I'm telling you, as messed up as this country it can be lately, it seems, you have no idea what these people who want to become American citizens go through to become American citizens. So that says something that they want to be there and they want to be here. And part of the interview process, because I have to be Officer Emily, who gives them the fake interview test, because uh, we practice this all the time, and I say, why do you want to become an American citizen? And the, the, quite, the answers are really simple. There are opportunities here. And my favorite answer is, I want to vote. Uh. <laughs> so before I burst into a puddle of tears, uh, we had a big party for the students, all my students that became American citizens, and they asked me to sing a song, and uh, this is what I sang for them.
Roy Condor. suggested uh, this pairing of songs. So yeah. Anna's going to join two songs that actually are related. Um, the song High Lily, High Low comes from the movie Lily. Right. And uh, Love Makes the World Go Round comes from Carnival, right. uh, which was a musical adaptation of Lily. And I think the song occupies the same slot in both the movie and the musical. Mm -hmm. And the only other thing I'll say is that uh, Bob Merrill also wrote the lyrics to one of the songs that Doug Cohen had <laughs> medley before. Ah. Just trying to give all the credit. That were, he, he, before he wrote either of these, he wrote, how much is that doggy in the window? Right. So just want to, you know. Gotcha. <laughs> okay. Well, and also this is John Delson and Tracy Stark and I kind of put this arrangement together. So this is uh, Returning to the beginning. <laughs> okay. It's also my mother's favorite song. On every tree there sits a bird singing a song of love. On every tree there sits a bird. And every song I ever heard could break my heart without a word. Singing a song of love. A song of love. Is a sad song. I live, I live, I live. 
A song of love is a song of woe. Don't ask me how I know. A song of love is a sad song for all. I live, I live, I love. Tomorrow I'll probably love again. I live, I live. singers that you've heard tonight. I'd like to thank John Delphin. I'd like to thank Kim Sharp and Madeline Burrow who have been on Sound and Light. I'd like to thank Sue Matsuki, my co-producer of this entire show. Francis Hill, the incredible artistic director, founding artistic director of Urban Stages Theater. I think that's everybody. It's been uh, <laughs> it's been quite a year. There's been loss. Uh, I was was lost two songwriting giants of mine in 2021. That would be Stephen Sondheim a couple of weeks ago and Nancy Griffith earlier this year. 
they were, those deaths were unrelated to COVID. Uh, about a year and a half ago, we lost John Prime. Uh, that was related to COVID. Um, it's, been a, it's been a tough year, but as with a lot of tough times, there have also been a lot of joys. Um, I've had two COVID grandbabies born in 2021. Yeah. <laughs> Both of my, I don't have one particularly uh, second daughter. I have two daughters who both gave birth in 2021 <laughs> rather than just one giving birth twice. Um, and so I have two new grandsons to join the, uh, the third one, their brother and cousin. So um, Finian, who was born in, in May, is going to have to wait a while for his song. Julia, my old, younger daughter, gave birth in January, and she asked me to write a song for her son Gideon. She asked me to write a lullaby um, that she could sing to Gideon. And uh, as I wrote the song, of course, I found that it, uh, yes, it, I think it suits that purpose, but it also suited another purpose, which is the song is really about me and about my feelings of fatherhood for Julia and Hannah. Uh, not sure that I can get through the song without crying, but somebody taught me a, um, a, a trick once, is that I focus on somebody in the audience and think about them sitting in their underwear, and then that will help. <laughs> well, anyway, so I won't do that either. Um, what I'll just do is sing, what I'll just do is sing uh, the song, uh, The Smile on My Face, which is for my new grandson, uh, Gideon. I should say one thing. Sorry, Kim. Um, I do believe that having uh, a child is about the biggest act of optimism that you can do. It's impossible to be a pessimist and have a child. It's just too, too terrible. You have to have hopeful thoughts and, and you have to have opportunities and dreams for your kids. So uh, that's what I wanted to say about this too. Sorry, Kim. smile on my face means I love you. The hope in my heart means I care. The love you have grown is the most I've ever known. Nothing, I mean nothing, can compare. always know how to soothe you. I hope it's enough that I try. The world is brand new and together we'll pull through. Hush, my darling baby, don't you cry. smile on my face means I love you. The hope in my heart means I care. The love you have grown is the most I've ever known. Nothing, I mean nothing, can compare. Anytime you Thank you everybody, happy holidays.